My name is Stanton T. Friedman. I'm a retired nuclear physicist. I've been working on my own for since 1970. I spent 14 years working in industry, a wide variety of advanced, highly technical, eventually canceled programs, <laughs> nuclear airplanes, fission rockets, fusion rockets, nuclear power plants for space. So I do my own thing. I'm independent. Thank goodness. Good. So, um, We've heard you say a lot of interesting things on the panel. Why don't you sum up for me, what's the most important takeaway from your expertise in this area? Well, I'm the original civilian investigator of the Roswell incident. It's the first, if it hadn't been for me, you wouldn't have heard about Roswell. Secondly, I've worked on advanced propulsion systems, so I know that the notion that you can't get here from there is wrong, flat out wrong. Uh, one of my books is Science Was Wrong. 14 chapters about smart people saying stupid things. You can't do this, you can't do that. Great astronomers saying man would never fly two months before the Wright brothers' first flight, that kind of thing. So, uh, and also because I've given over 700 lectures in all 50 states, 10 provinces, and 18 other countries, I've heard all the questions before, if you will, and I've had to think about them so that I have an answer on the stage, not tomorrow I'll get back to you, kind of thing. So uh, I'm interested in today, this whole week, because I have no idea what's going to come out of this. I'm impressed by the congressmen. They seem to be taking their job, or ex-congressmen, they seem to be taking their job seriously. So it's an interesting and different uh, event. I've spoken to a lot of conferences, and uh, th this one is different. The format's different, and the tone is different. So what really happened out there at Roswell that we need to know? Well, it was actually near Corona, and a flying saucer crashed, was retrieved by the government. I was the first to talk to Major Marcel. His son is here now, who handled wreckage from that crash. His son is a medical doctor. He was a colonel in the military. Called back in to serve in Iraq at age 68, would you believe? 200 flying hours in helicopters. He's a flight surgeon as well. And it's clear that the materials were like nothing from this planet. And it's clear that there was a cover up. Uh, I spent a lot of time on the incident. I have a book about it. Uh, that wasn't the only crash, you understand. There are at least two other well documented crashes. Uh, so aliens are visiting, governments are lying. We've taken, it's, it's time for a new view of ourselves and our place in the universe. It wasn't very long ago we thought we were it. Ain't no other planets out there. We're the smartest and we're on top of the heap. Now we know that's not true. <laughs> and that certainly isn't true. And uh, I give the SETI guys a hard time. S-E-T-I, mm -hmm. solely effort to investigate as far as I'm concerned. Because it assumes that aliens are stuck at our level of technology and are sending us signals for some unknown reason. Our first long distance radio signal was 1901. Uh, you mean nobody out there has done any better than that? I don't use a slide rule anymore. I did when I was young. There are better tools around now. So. Uh, I try to bring a modicum of good sense to the topic, having answered all these questions, having listened to all the objections. I've won debates on the subject with SETI guys. <laughs> uh, so it, it's an interesting experience. Roswell was not the only one, but it was certainly the first one that got any attention.